The St. Thomas was one of the six public housing projects constructed under the Housing Act of 1937. It was constructed between the years of 1938 and 1941 and contained 920 units or two or three story brick buildings. Initially, the original site of the Irish Channel, border by Tapatulas and St. Charles between Facility and Phillips Streets, the Thomas was one of the oldest projects in New Orleans. The Thomas was originally designated for white occupants only. That would change after the Civil Rights Act of 1964. All of the city's public housing projects would be desegregated. The housing authority will begin demolition and redevelopment in the late 1990s. Five of the original buildings will be saved for historical purposes. The buildings are on the corner of Felicity and St. Thomas Streets along the 1800 block of St. Thomas and were renovated along with the new housing construction. Original boundaries were St. Thomas Street, Felicity Street, Josephine Street, and a service alley between Constance and Laurel Streets. In 1996, the Housing Authority of New Orleans will receive a HUD grant to demolish and rebuild the Thomas. The grant included the cost of relocating the nearly 3,000 then residents to other properties. By the end of 2001, all of the buildings except a few had been demolished to create a mixed income neighborhood named River Garden. A section of Chippewa Street was realigned in the process. Also, a new Walmart superstore was constructed on a long vacant property one block from the Thomas. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. For the New Jack City. Bum. The story starts in February of 1987. Johnny Davis, aka Tent War Fat, 13 at the time, would be picked up for possessing a 32. On June 10th of that same year, Fat would be adjudicated as a juvenile delinquent for illegally carrying a brickly. On December 19, 1988, Fat would again be picked up, this time for resisting arrest while in possession of another GAT. Fat would be adjudicated as a juvenile delinquent on January 10, 1989, for that charge. In August of 1991, Fat will resist arrest and commit battery on an officer while in possession of a concealed blicky. Fat would again be adjudicated as a juvenile delinquent on October 29th of 1991 for carrying and resisting arrest along with the battery of an officer. On April 8, 1992, Fat, along with several other men, would bust at and jack several customers inside the Imperial Lounge located at 320 West Wego Avenue in Bread City, Louisiana. In April of 93, Fat would be convicted of 11 counts of attempted first degree and jacking. Let's fast forward. Fat and Anthony Buckles would be arrested by the NOPD. Anthony would take the charge for the blicky recovered during the arrest. Fat would still be charged with the Thule. While incarcerated, Fat would solicit the assistance of a co-defendant to crush a cooperating government witness in his case. Let's rewind. While incarcerated on charges in 98, Fat would still be moving work while behind bars. He would enlist the aid of his homie to cop and move work for him in the Thomas. While incarcerated, Fat will link up with Stephen Anthony Joseph, aka Hot Boy Dooney. The two will form a bond and be thicker than thieves. It is rumored that Dooney and Fat will run the unit that they were on. It wouldn't be long before Dooney will be released and hit the streets. Upon his release, Dooney will hit the ground running and form what we now know today as the Dooney Boys, aka the DBs. It is rumored that the DBs were bringing in 20K a day, pumping that dog food in the Noya. This run wasn't as long as Dooney would get into it one of the young pups out the Noya and eventually get hit up. Dooney would later pass due to internal bleeding. It wouldn't be long before Johnny Davis, aka Tent War Fat, would take the reins. Fat, who was in the Noya, slid in to position. The DBs will be rumored to be having a problem with Leonard Morgan, a dude out the Noya. On March 13th of 2001, it is rumored that Fat would approach Leonard Morgan, who would up the tool on Fat immediately with no hesitation. Being in the street since the age of 13, Fat was smart and calculated. There's alleged that Fat would talk Leonard down and crush him. October 12, 2001, a federal grand jury would indict Johnny Davis, a.k.a. Fat, and others for allegedly committing various federal crimes. Those crimes would be 
Conspiracy to distribute dog food. Conspiracy to distribute dog food using juveniles and conspiracy to carry tools in furtherance of a trafficking conspiracy along with the crushing of four people. Those four people would be Leonard Morgan, Rodney Woods, Samuel Collins, and Walter Naylor. On May 14, 2003, Ejiro will find fat guilty of counts 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Fat will be acquitted on counts 4 and 5 on September 17, 2003. Fat will be sentenced to life for counts 1, 6, 8, and 10, a term of 720 months for count 2, a term of 120 months for count 7, 9, and 11, and a term of 240 months as to count 3, all to run concurrently. One of Fat's co-defendants would be Richard Porter, aka WAP, not to be confused with the Richard Porter from NY. The indictment would charge WAP separately with distribution of that girl, two counts of being a felon in possession of a blicky, use of and discharge of a gat during the commission of trafficking crime, specifically distribution of that girl and conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute that boy which would allegedly cause the attempted crushing of Chantel. The alleged crimes would take place in or around the Thomas and Magnolia housing projects in New Orleans. Fat would appeal his sentencing immediately, arguing that the wiretap used were unlawful under the plain language of federal and then applicable state laws because the application for the wiretaps were signed by an assistant in the office of the Louisiana Attorney General rather than the Attorney General himself. Fat would also argue that it was Louisiana's intent to expand the persons who can apply for a wiretap in order to use illegal wiretaps in his case, and that at the time, the challenge applications were signed, Louisiana did not permit an assistant attorney general to sign applications. This would all fall on deaf ears as Fats Pip would be denied. Johnny Davis, aka Fat, and Richard Porter, aka WAP, remain in the federal prison system serving life sentences. Before the life sentence would be handed down, prosecutors were trying to slam Fat with the death penalty. The jury will convict Fat of all counts brought against him except the counts involving one of the crushings and the possession of a blicky on the date of that crushing. The jury would ultimately end up rejecting the death penalty for Fat. The nail in the coffin would be testimony from three snitches who would testify in the case, ultimately sealing Fat and Wop's fate. Soldier Slim would go on to record Cheese Eaters, where he would reference the snitches, Fat's case, and Fat's sentencing. This was the story of Johnny Davis, a.k.a. Ten Ward Fat.